ever feel like you're like drowning in crises? I mean, one after another, you yeah. know? Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, imagine being a Roman emperor, right? But during a massive, I mean, truly devastating plague. Can't say I've ever envied an emperor. Today, we're diving into the story of Marcus Aurelius and the Antonine Plague. Oh, this is a good one. It really is. Talk about leadership under pressure. Yeah. But we can all learn something from this, I think. We're using his own writing, by the way. His journal, meditation. Yeah, plus historical accounts to kind of get this full picture of what he was dealing with. That sounds fascinating. So, like, let's set the stage right. What was this Antonine Plague? And, like, why should we even care today? Okay, so this wasn't some, like ancient history footnote this plague i mean it's just it exploded across the entire roman empire around 165 a.d we're talking peak roman empire here exactly you know? and it crippled them mm. massive loss of life cities just decimated the military too right i mean they were constantly mm. fighting off who was it the germanic tribes at the time among others and yeah their legions were hit hard by this plague it's a like a brutal reminder even the most powerful empires they're not invincible and that makes you think about you know like our world today with pandemics and I don't know, just everything going on. Right. History doesn't exactly repeat, but it sure does rhyme. So we're talking about smallpox here, right? Mm. That's got to be, that was rough. Oh, absolutely brutal. We're talking like fever, chills, these horrible pustules all over the body. And this is way before modern medicine. Galen, he was a physician at the time, he left these really vivid descriptions of the symptoms and how quickly it spread. Imagine being a doctor back then with basically no understanding of what caused it or how to even treat it. Talk about being on the front lines. Right. And it's fascinating. He, uh, Galen, I mean, he traced it back to the East. He thought soldiers returning from campaigns probably brought it back with them. Wow. Globalization, huh? Yeah. Even back then, it had its downside. Yeah. Talk about unintended consequences. So, okay, here's Marcus Aurelius, Emperor of Rome, philosopher. And a Stoic. Don't forget that part. Right. A Stoic facing down this just like unimaginable crisis what does he do and this is where it gets really interesting because here's this guy right devoted his life to stoicism to reason and virtue and all that and boom life throws him the biggest curveball imaginable it's like the ultimate test of his philosophy exactly and um instead of crumbling under the pressure he he kind of like leans into it you know he didn't abandon his beliefs no not at all actually his journals meditations give of us this incredible window into how he coped, how he processed it all. Wait, so he was like journaling through a plague. What kind of stuff did he write about? Well, imagine, right, the weight of the empire on his shoulders, people dying all around him, economic turmoil, constant threats from barbarians. And yet his writing, it's all about duty, acceptance, finding order in chaos. Uh, it takes some serious mental fortitude. For real, like he wrote about death being natural, inevitable, something nobody can control, not even an emperor. Wow. So he wasn't just talking about stoicism. He was living it under the most extreme pressure imaginable. It makes you wonder how much his leadership, you know, which was so shaped by stoicism, how that actually impacted his response to the plague. Oh, I mean, it's a masterclass in leadership, honestly. Instead of panicking, he focuses on what he could control, providing aid to the sick, trying to maintain order, projecting calm, even when everything's falling apart. It's like imagine the ripple effect, right? Yeah. If your leader's freaking out, everyone freaks out. Right, but he stayed strong and that I made a difference. His actions, guided by these stoic principles, they offered a sense of stability in a time of just like complete instability. Okay, so fast forward to today. It makes you think about how like we deal with crises, right? Big or small. Do we fall apart or do we like Marcus Aurelius just focus on what we can control? It's such a powerful question, and I think his story gives us the answer. Even in the face of chaos, grounding ourselves in our values, you know, focusing on what we can influence, on what we can do, it makes a world of difference. A timeless lesson, really. Totally. This has been incredible. Thank you for uh, for diving into this with me. My pleasure, honestly. Marcus Aurelius, I mean, he's one of those historical figures who just really makes you think. Right, and hopefully our listeners too. Absolutely. So here's something for everyone listening to consider. If Marcus Aurelius could travel through time and just kind of like observe our modern world, what would he think? W would our anxieties and, you know, our crises, would they seem familiar to him? Or are we facing something totally different? I'm
I'm never back down If a heart is steel and a will so strong I'll stand tall, I see you yeah. Change the melody Instead of craving final harmony The memory of everything Overwhelmed in time In the rock ballad We find the climb Do not indulge in dreams Wrapping up the blessings true In the rock rhythm Find what's in you Read with diligence Not a superficial sound In the rock first Let the wisdom resound I won't be shaken I won't be swayed bound copy of all my notes. So I would suggest you do the same. Things that impress you, a poem that impresses you. Uh, when you attend a class, some of the ideas that impressed you, jot them down. Uh, if you read something in a magazine, write some ideas, take those out, put them in your journal, keep a good journal the rest of your life, this will serve you well. My journals make up a significant portion of my own library. And if you saw my library and saw my journals, I'd tell you what you'd have to say. This is the library and these are the journals of a very serious student. No wonder Mr. Rohn is invited to lecture and speak on his experiences around the world. So I want the same thing to happen to you. Value captured that you can resort to later. Go back over it and review it and let it become valuable to you. So that's my first subject, personal development. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Develop the skills, learn the lessons, take the classes. Uh, absorb all that is being taught to you these days. And then later on, of course, you can sort it out, what's valuable to you and how to refine it for your business and for your life and for your future. But the main thing is to get it and start this process of personal change, personal development. And let me say it one more time, if you will change, everything will change for you. You'll never be the same, you'll keep growing, as you look back on a few months, look back on a few years, you won't believe the progress you can make economically, your relationship with your family, your friends, and whether you're in sports or economics or whatever, I'm telling you, that whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile. How much more grievous are the consequences of anger than the causes of it? Seek respect, not attention. It lasts longer. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Aristotle. This quote highlights the importance of critical thinking and the ability to consider different perspectives without immediately embracing them. He who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. Our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds.
The self is always present. You only need to recognize it. Nisargadatta Maharaj As we say commonly, the physician hath prescribed unto this man riding, unto another cold baths, unto a third to go barefoot. So it is alike to say, the nature of the universe hath prescribed unto this man sickness, or blindness, or some loss, or damage, or some such thing. For as there, when we say of a physician, that he hath prescribed anything, our meaning is, that he hath appointed this for that, as subordinate and conducing to health. So here, whatsoever doth happen unto any, is ordained unto him as a thing, subordinate unto the fates, and therefore do we say of such things, that they do simvenin, that is, happen or fall together. As of square stones, when either in walls or pyramids in a certain position they fit one another, and agree, as it were, in an harmony, the masons say, that they do simvenin, as if thou shouldest say, fall together, so that in the general, though the things be diverse that make it, yet the consent or harmony itself is but one. And as the whole world is made up of all the particular bodies of the world, one perfect and complete body, of the same nature that particular bodies, so is the destiny of particular causes and events one general one, of the same nature that particular causes are. What I now say, even they that are mere idiots are not ignorant of, for they say commonly tuto efferenafto, that is, this his destiny hath brought upon him. This therefore is by the fates properly and particularly brought upon this, as that unto this in particular is by the physician prescribed. These therefore let us accept of in like manner, as we do those that are prescribed unto us our physicians. For them also in themselves shall we find to contain many harsh things, but we nevertheless, in hope of health and recovery, accept of them. Let the fulfilling and accomplishment of those things which the common nature hath determined be unto thee as thy health, except then and be pleased with whatsoever doth happen, though otherwise harsh and unpleasing, as tending to that end, to the health and welfare of the universe, and to Job's happiness and prosperity. For this whatsoever it be, should not have been produced, had it not conduced to the good of the universe. For neither doth any ordinary particular nature bring anything to pass, that is not to whatsoever is within the sphere of its own proper administration and government, agreeable and subordinate. For these two considerations, then, thou must be well pleased with anything that doth happen unto thee. First, because that for thee properly it was brought to pass, and unto thee it was prescribed, and that from the very beginning by the series and connection of the first causes, it hath ever had a reference unto thee. And secondly, because the good success and perfect welfare, and indeed the very continuance of him, that is, the administrator of the whole, doth in a manner depend on it. For the whole, because whole, therefore entire and perfect, is maimed and mutilated. If thou shalt cut off anything at all, whereby the coherence and contiguity, as of parts, so of causes, is maintained and preserved, of which certain it is that thou doest as much as lieth in thee, cut off, and in some sort violently take somewhat away, as often as thou art displeased with anything that happeneth. Because fans don't know, teammates don't know, nor do they care, nor should they, that you've been up all night. You gotta perform. Like I see a lot of players take vacations with other players that are close friends and I'll just take vacations just to take vacations or just hang out just to hang out like I, I, I'm not I never did that but why, why not why, why, why didn't you do that what, well because when I retire I didn't want to have to say I wish I would have done more all week he was working 
end of the week, if you don't type it, this is good question. Mm. You have to worry about yourself. But this is Saturday. Mm. Your sixth day, you work so hard. Of course, you're going to type. Mm. Tomorrow rest and Monday, you're going to begin one more training. Mm. If you don't want, go back to Dagestan and stay with your mom. Mm. She's going to give you every day good breakfast. Yeah. You don't do nothing. Stay there. But if you come here, don't complain. You want to become best. You want to become champion. And now you want to say like you're tired. Who cares? You're tired or not? Nobody cares about it. He was tired. He had personal problem, family. Nobody cares. A lot of people live their entire lives not fulfilling their purpose. One time in my life, I felt that. What was my purpose? Till you find the center of your being, you will continue to walk, going through the motions. The one companion that's always going to be with you is yourself. Yourself is what you have. And you need to encourage yourself. You need to look around and you need to be able to say, look, I'm not stuck here unless I choose to stay here. If you don't have somebody who's going to do that, become that somebody. What's something difficult you're going through that people don't often see? I mean, my mind is a storm. I don't think most people would want to be me. They may think. Do not let yesterday use up too much of today. Spend your first 20 years worrying what people think about you. You spend your next 20 years swearing that you don't care what people think about you. You spend the next 20 years realizing that they aren't thinking about you. A good teacher is better than a barrel full of books. Chinese proverb. People are distressed by their inability to do it. The problem, however, is simply that they don't do it. <laughs>